What up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Net Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo. And joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, let's get back into the groove of things. Let's talk about the news. Uh, a lot of news to go over. We're going to talk some Venom, Spider-Man, obviously, and Sony's uh, own universe, which will is going to, which is going to be, I think, in a very interesting conversation because I have my thoughts about that. Um, we got, we're going to discuss, discuss um, the Batman uh, CinemaCon footage that was shown to the people in, in attendance there. Um, most likely we'll probably get some of that uh, imagery from that uh trailer or, or featurette in um at fandom um we'll talk about marvel's plans for halloween and i think it's becoming sort of a theme with them uh doing sort of specials for different holidays i guess right um and then we're gonna get into some shang chi reviews some of the stuff that people are saying about which has been consistent because a lot of people who weren't supposed to review it, were kind of reviewing it by telling us specific things about certain acts or whatever the case may be. But still, in all, still um, the, 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 the reviews are stellar for Shang-Chi. So we're gonna talk about that. First up, Venom 2, Brian. We keep on, two days ago, we get an article regarding Venom 2 being delayed. Then a day later, we get an article saying Sony is not delaying Venom. What are your thoughts on, based on what's happening in the world? Do you see a possibility that it, it may get um, uh, delayed once again till January was one of the, the date, January 2022 was one of the dates that people were talking about. Um, what are the chances of that? From a scale of one to ten, you tell me and 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 give me a reason why you think that is or isn't the case. I would still say it's about a five. I think it's about a coin flip okay. as to whether it moves again. Now, I had guessed when we last talked about this that Venom could move into the Spider-Man spot at Christmas, and we Spider-Man would be the one to back up. Now, I think, given we saw the the No Way Home trailer has December seventeenth stamped yeah. the report then came out that it was morbius the january morbius date was the date that if venom got pushed okay. it would back morbius up so pretty close with what we were thinking but uh just a different title there mm -hmm. i still think it's a coin flip just because i i just think we have too many uncertainties with regard to box office and the state of the world that like two or three weeks to me, the only reason you do that is so you don't have to remarket the film so that your existing promotional material still applies because September, October is not a big change. I think we will get our answer after Shang-Chi opens, right? A theatrical only, so from Sony's perspective, right? Because this is not a, something they can stream. They're gonna be looking at that movie as the theater only proxy for what their movie can do. Yeah. So if Shang-Chi is able, and the reviews will certainly help their cause, if Shang-Chi can get up closer to that F9 Black Widow level than I previously estimated, I thought Shang-Chi would be more 50 to 55 million given the world we have, not because of the movie itself. But if that comes in more like 65, 70, let's say, I think they go with the October date because they're going to say this movie made 800 million the last time. So we've already got some credibility that people want to come back and see Tom Hardy as Venom again. I think if Shang-Chi goes more the way of Suicide Squad in terms of its box office performance to so more like say 30 to 40, 35, I think they push it. That's kind of what I'm thinking their analysis might be yeah. um, so i don't know what you're if you feel different but it just it still feels pretty fluid to me if they let's put it this way the only other reason they wouldn't do it is if they're out so much money on this movie already that they can't yeah. we haven't heard that so no yeah. yeah i mean certainly 
depending on the the, the performance of Shang Chi, which is getting stellar reviews, people are going nuts over this films of over this film, and it doesn't do well at the box office. I think you certainly come to the table and rethink your approach on when to release this because at the end of the day, I mean, you put out so much money for a film, you don't want you you don't want to lose right so it, it, depending on what let's see what happens with shang chi then um we can certainly make a good case for them to delay or, or or not right so let's let's see about that um let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about venom to possibly even though they say that they're not delayed it's supposed to come out october 17th October. No, that's the seven. December seventeenth is Spider Man. October, sometime in October, right? Yeah, that was like October twenty fourth or something like that. Okay. Okay, so let's see if that sticks. Let's see if that sticks. I mean, does it put in jeopardy Eternals after that? If they can't perform on this film, Shang Chi. You mean if Shang Chi can't perform? Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, I mean, nothing's impossible. Um, Eternals it says November in the trailer. So that's been promoted that it is a November release. I'm going to yeah. say no. So the reason I'm actually going to say the bar is higher for Eternals to move is because they want it to be Academy Awards eligible. And for it to be Academy Awards eligible, it has to be out before the holidays no i think so i think that one might get treated a little bit differently because of that yeah true all right yeah let us know in the comment section below next up sony's spider-man universe name makes spidey's return inevitable so sony has taken it upon himself to Name their Spider-Man uh, universe. What do they call this? I forgot. It's so forgettable. It's like nobody's. It's one really... of those things that you know. <laughs> there were like twenty-five people in a marketing department in a room that spent hours and weeks on like hundreds of versions of this, <laughs> and it's like doesn't really matter. Yeah, exactly. Listen, the way I see this thing going, obviously, there's going to come a point where Marvel and Sony are not going to see eye to eye, and Marvel is going to be preoccupied with other things. Fantastic yep. Four, Mutants, Galactus, all this other stuff that they got to, to, to play with. Whereas with Sony, I don't think they really care about, other than the money factor, don't really care about the character as much as they seem to display to people. I think this is just an opportunity to make as much money as possible before um, it has to go back to Spider-Man because we're not making money on it. And that could possibly be soon. They're taking a chance. They're taking a chance because one movie the fact that listen the fact that we hear news about spider-man no longer being in the mcu because marvel and sony just can't do it or whatever the case may be or sony is just you know they just want to do their own thing that's going to cause a, a cause a, a negative um effect with regards to people sort of sticking around to see spider-man what will even send it over the edge is if you give us a horrible movie. It doesn't have to be a Spider-Man movie. It can be a Craven movie that they've been wanting to do. It could be freaking Morbius. I want Sony to fail. Because to me, even though Marvel, they can they don't have to go, they don't have to use Spider-Man right now. I think after this movie, we're probably we're probably going to come to the table and see what happens. But there's just so much stuff that Marvel has on their on their plate that they don't they can push Spider-Man to the side and do that. 
whereas Sony has to deal with this and provide new content with new characters. They have a bunch of stuff they can do. But if it fails and people aren't up for it, it is over. Brian. So the old title was Sony's Universe of Marvel Characters. And the new title is Sony's Spider-Man Universe. Damn right, it has to be that. <laughs> so, look, I mean, the two obvious, right? You remove Marvel from the yeah. co-brand, yeah. co yeah. but you also try to, I think they're trying to hook fans with, it's if it's Spidey's universe, then all these movies would have Spidey's presence, right? So the idea of, like, Spider-Man can show up in Morbius, could show up with Venom, could show up. Like, that's what they're trying to tease you with, right? We're moving toward this world where Spider-Man doesn't just cross over into MCU films, he crosses over into Sony films as well. Yeah. Which, look, I, that's that's not a dumb move. I mean, that's, that's yeah. what you should do if you have those characters. Yeah. Um, but but it, there is that feel a little bit of the WB you know, we want to run before we can walk a little bit. And, you know, even with this, you know, I think that's kind of what's feeding a lot of our no way home concerns is like this movie just feels like it's, it's rushing, maybe rushing ahead a little bit in part because Sony wants its universe. They want to get up and running and don't necessarily want to invest the 10, 12 years that Marvel studios did to get there. Yeah. We, you know, the worst thing that ever happened to WBDC was the MCU, mm -hmm. right? Because had Avengers not worked as a build-up team-up, there yeah. wouldn't have been the pressure on WB and Zack Snyder to get Justice League to screen the way they did. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, now yeah. it almost feels like we're doing it all over again with another studio, where it's like. Yeah, I get it. Like you got Venom off the ground. Maybe there's an audience for Morbius, but we don't know. But like yeah. you are already three steps ahead trying to get to your end game, your Avengers end game. And it's like, but you're missing the process. Yeah. Which is how it all worked in the first place. So I don't know. Yeah, I just don't see this Marvel Sony relationship lasting for too long. And um when that relationship is over, all eyes are going to be on Sony and what can they, what can they deliver? And will it be good enough? Will people care at that point? Will people be adamant about wanting Spider-Man in, in the MCU? And if they are, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what fans' reactions will be towards that day when it happens. Well, look, the other part of this, too, is we've talked about Sony as an entity. And, you know, I brought it up in the context of Netflix. And we don't know all the legalities and the contracts. But, you know, 10, 12 years from now, is Sony going to be its own business? I don't know. I mean, who would to say Disney doesn't just write them a check mm. and just says, like, we make so much money. Name your price. You guys, all your executives, Amy Pascal, whoever's over there. We'll make you all billionaires, but you give us, give us the prop, give us the IP. I mean, that, you know, at the end of the day, it, I find it hard to believe that someday you won't see these characters under a Disney Marvel umbrella. Yeah. Whether they buy it directly, whether Netflix buys Sody and the rights revert, like it, it just feels like all roads ultimately lead to, lead to yeah. Us. Yeah, yeah, and 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 they should, you know, because I I just feel that all these characters belong. We've got so much of it back, right? These other characters really can't survive on their own without being a part of the MCU. It's, it's just my opinion. So let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about um, Sony's Spider-Man universe, um, and whether you think that has legs. You know, obviously, you know, you heard from us and definitely from me that this is not going to last. And at some point, hopefully within our lifetime, we'll see Spider-Man in the MCU solely exclusively in that world. Well, just ask yourself, how excited are you for Venom 2 and Morbius? Because that's really the question. As we said, Spider-Man sells himself. 
you know, a bad Spider-Man movie still generally will make some money, at least at this point. How excited are you to, based on the footage you've seen for Venom 2 and Morbius? Like, if you are excited, then you're a believer in what Sony's trying to do. If you're kind of like, well, this is the latest example of superhero fatigue, then that's probably one step closer to, to this kind of flaming out, I think. I mean, I'm not like super excited for Venom 2. I, I'm sure I certainly want to see because I want to see how this progresses. But the world was clearly more excited for Venom than we were. Like we both yeah. saw it, but 820 some odd million of box office says there really was a, especially a global audience that wanted that character. I think it had to do with a lot of word of, word of mouth because I, I didn't think it was a bad film for a Venom oh. film. And it felt like that was, to me, it felt like I was watching a Venom film. Yeah. So I was I cool with it. And I think, you know, people, you know, spoke about it and, and comic book fans went to go see it. Um, again, these things have their beginning where you, 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 you spark some curiosity for people to want to go see it. But if the, the content isn't bad, how likely are they to return? Possibly one time at least, which is not enough if you want to make box office like big numbers, right? So... Yeah. I think the other thing too is like, you know, some of these characters can't exist without Spider-Man ultimately, you know, so we talk about Kraven the Hunter, like Kraven the Hunter's endgame is Spider-Man. That's part of what yeah. makes the character memorable to make a Kraven trilogy that doesn't acknowledge or include Spider-Man. It's like, why are we bothering? Like sure. it's, it, it, you're doomed before you start. So I think yeah. they did realize that they had to basically make Spider-Man and the same with, you know, if you want Sinister Six, a lot of these foils are there for Spider-Man, Doc Ock, Green Goblin. I don't care who, how well they're played. It's yeah. like you've said with Batman universe stuff. There's only so much you can do with that before you need Batman. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see, man. Let's see what Sony has to offer in the next few years. Let's see where this ends up. Uh, next up, Spider-Man No Way Home trailer shatters Avengers Endgame 24-hour uh, uh, viewership record. Brian, if you put 10 people in a the room, they've eaten. Put some food in there. Little by little, you'll have people checking out the food and stuff like that. You leave them there for days and put that same tray. People are going to go after that food because they haven't had it. They need to eat. So with that being said, the amount of questions of when is the Spider-Man trailer, it reached its peak. Mm -hmm. And people were waiting for this. It is not a surprise to me that um, this was able to break that viewership record because when Endgame trailer was being talked about, I couldn't wait for it. Most people couldn't wait for it, but there wasn't this, this sort of feverish uh, anticipation for, for it. We got it when we got it and everybody who's been following along with this story saw it. With this, you know, it was almost every week. When is the Spider-Man trailer coming? Is it gonna be there? all this stuff? And then we finally get the trailer and everybody just runs to go see it. Are you surprised by this? Not really. I mean, you know, it, I, I don't viewership and how the trailer is are two totally different questions. As we said in our prior to, in our discussion of the trailer itself, I mean, as a Spider-Man is as known a brand in the comic book genre as there is. It's a family friendly hero. So there's really no audience that's not gonna check this out. Yeah. Um, we obviously been waiting several years for new properties and i would say out of the characters that are appearing in films this year spider-man far and away i would argue the biggest like awareness score right i mean if we just yeah, said yeah. like from from wonder woman to black widow to shang chi to eternals to suicide squad to venom Spider-Man's a class above all of those just in terms of brand recognition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you layer in all the rumors. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So then you layer in Toby and Andrew and all the villains. And then you even layer in the leak. I think the leak helped weirdly. Mm-hmm. I think the fact that like it was oh, all yeah. over the news that there was this shaky handheld thing out there. Yeah. It like centered people's awareness on the actual trailer hitting. And it all kind of coalesced into this viewership record, which is not to say that everyone loved what they saw, but yeah. that they were just like, great, give me, give me Spider-Man. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this after however many years it's been. Yeah. Please go check out. Um, we did a, we did a video we, um, um, about, um, and this was before the Spider-Man trailer and we had, it was a spot. It was a Spider-Man spotlight show where we talked about, you know, some of our concerns and uh, about Spider-Man uh, No Way Home, and then we had a discussion after the trailer. So check out those two videos so you can see where we sort of what we sort of think about uh, Spider-Man and No Way Home and what you know what's going to happen here. Is there a trailer? What's the trailer in your lifetime that you most looked forward to? When did you start paying attention to that sort of zeitgeist and counting down to actually seeing footage? The movie? Yeah. Is there a movie oh, that... Oh, oh, like, oh, oh, oh. So any movie. Okay. Any Man, movie that's... where, like, you you were, like, when that tra- like whenever the trailer drops or you got wind of the trailer dropping and your anticipation was just, like, through the roof, what's the movie you wanted to see footage of? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I mean, as far as I can remember, I'll say... Gladio was one trailer that I, I you know, I went, I couldn't wait to see that movie when I saw the trailer. Um, you, you can say Matrix. You can say Man of Steel as well. Man of Steel had me hype. Um, I mean, there's been a bunch. The latest obsession or obsessions is the Eternals and the Batman. But when I really started caring about it, it's really hard to tell because you know I've been watching trailers forever. And mm. I mean, I can't even think about the Transformers. I couldn't wait to see the Transformers when I saw the trailer, you know? So it, it, it's, it's an assortment of, of trailers that I've seen over the years that has gotten me hype. I can't, I can't, right now, the hype as I've been is for the Batman, I think. Interesting. So for me, I, I think it's, Star Wars Phantom Menace. I think that's the one that was like, for me, I was old enough. And I think because the internet had really just, that was 1996, I think. Mm -hmm. Let me think, do I have that right? No, 99, sorry. So this is 98 when the trailer comes out. Mm -hmm. So the internet had really, had just gotten to the stage where like video streaming, like was starting to be a thing. So the mm-hmm. idea that you could see a trailer from home, you didn't have to go to the movies to see it. Yeah. I remember like just waiting and like, obviously so many of us were star Wars fans and this yeah. was, you know, we'd gotten the special editions in 97 in the theaters. We knew there was a new trilogy finally happening. I think that's the one that like when the first trailer hit, I was like counting down minutes, watched it like a hundred times over when it came out. It says nothing about how good the movie actually was, but just like the anticipation. You had a good call, though. I think Transformers is up there. That first random teaser on Mars where you kind of see the shot of the robot and then the logo, just given how that was my favorite cartoon growing up. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's probably the, the other one that in my lifetime I was like more excited to just see really happen. Yeah. And then I probably, it's funny, you said Man of Steel. That's a good one, the, the teaser where he's kind of flying up. Um, that's that's yeah. probably a, a pretty decent call. I would probably throw, I don't know if it's a true trailer, but remember when they did kind of the, the sizzle reel for the first Avengers movie? It was at the end of Cap, I think. wasn't It was at the end of First Avenger. Mm-hmm. They did like a sizzle reel to lead you into Avengers. I think that might have been the other where I was Possibly, like. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like a built countdown to the actual trailer. It was like the cut scene at the end. Instead of a scene, they did like a quick cut yeah. teasing the team up. Yeah. I think that maybe that's the the other one. But yeah, no, it's it's just funny to think about. Like when I saw this, I was like trying, I was trying to parse through like all the trailers I've seen and like what have I been most excited about? Cause like Matrix, I just don't think I had the the buildup because I didn't really know what it was. It looked cool when I saw it, but I was like, I didn't know what it was. 
Um, and I feel the same way even about like Batman Begins. Like I said, I was kind of underwhelmed by that very first teaser. I do remember though, The Dark Knight, not so much the trailer, but that whole like, remember they did the first, the, they did the bank robbery in front of the movie in IMAX. And that was like yeah. the first time where like, yeah. if you went to the one movie, you got shown like the seven yeah. minutes that I remember being hyped up for. So, yeah. I'll say this and, and then we'll move on. The Batman Begins trailer had me hyped because when you first watch it, on your first watch, you don't know what it is until you get the reveal that is the Batman cowl when he opens up the closet that he has. And the fact that it was uh, Kristen Bell, because after seeing Equilibrium, which is a great film, and Brian, you, I mean, you, you, we've spoken about it in the past very briefly. Um, Wait, okay, so Equilibrium, got to stick something in here. <laughs> Remember our discussion about Black Widow and my complaint about Black Widow? Black uh -huh. Widow did not have the scene of him going through the hallway and carving those guards up in the white suit. That's yeah. the scene that I think Scarlett Johansson should have had somewhere in that movie to get yeah, to yeah, Taskmaster yeah. and yeah, to yeah, get yeah, to yeah. Rykoff. And that movie actually does it perfectly because that's oh, yeah. incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you guys have not seen Equilibrium, you got to watch it. You got to watch it. It's, it's, it's a very, very... Um, it's not meant to be a fantastic film. It's just a film with great action and a, 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 a cool concept. I, I just thought it was, a, and because there was no emotion towards some of the emotional parts, because the movie, you're not supposed to have emotion <laughs> other than <laughs> the, the action parts, which were really, really dope. Um, next up, The Batman. CinemaCon footage that was shown to those individuals attending that uh, show is, I read some of the description of what was shown. And I, I think I have something pulled up here where um, uh, Matt Reeves is talking and as well as, well as um, Pattinson is talking about um, the Batman in filming let me just pull that up real quick so pattinson says for some reason batman has always stood as one of the major characters of the 20th century and says this is a radically different version radically different version of the hero from other adaptation then reeve speaks promising an emotional batman movie he reiterates that the movie is not an origin story, though the Batman is inspired by Batman Year One, a uh, comic arc from Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli, but does but does follow the Batman in his early days. Then Pattinson says he's really working out this rage. All the fights seem very personal, as we can very well see from that first trailer, how he destroys his gang member and just and this is going to be very interesting and batman is showing uh using and he was shown using a variety of weapons wow further footage shows andy circus as alfred pennyworth mm -hmm. complete with a vest and white hair and the batmobile with flames emitting from the exhaust the clip ends with reeve saying we can't wait for you to see the batman in theaters next year which seems to be the same sort of rhetoric being spoken of by the people who participated in this film i can see what Pattinson says the same in terms of like he's really working out his rage. Think of this is a psychological film where the Batman, Bruce Wayne, Robert Pattinson is taking out whatever hurt, rage, anything that he's feeling, he's taking it out on everyone whom he feels deserves it. He's not killing them. He may be breaking some bones. He may be, he's beating people up. This is, this is not Batman lassoing them up and hanging them up on the side of a building. No. And putting fear into them. No, this is Batman beating people up, assaulting them. Right? Criminals. You can understand Gordon like uh, we can, all the police department. We can't have this. 
Yes, that I understand. Hanging people up on a string and for the cops and the hand delivering it to them, that's fine. Police department will let that go. But beating people up and viciously, which is what we're going to see. And I'm interested in seeing, Brian, this emotional um, story from his point of view of where this anger come from. Obviously, it comes from it comes from his his mother and father being murdered right in front of him and he is working that out and he's taking it out on the people from Gotham not criminals from Gotham what were your thoughts after reading this and listening well not listening but reading uh their description of what this movie is going to be and what where this journey is going to take us yeah, not, nothing that comes out about this movie from an actual content perspective uh does anything but make me more excited uh i think we've heard a lot about the detective angle the noir style we've seen the footage but look i I mean i think matt reeves is asking a very basic question which is if you had an individual who actually experienced this and then decided he was going to take the law into his own hands and do something about it that person would not go out there like a robot. You yeah. know, I feel like a lot of times we see Batman in action, it's almost like they dial the emotion down. It's repressed. He's kind yeah. of almost like very calm and he's brooding, but not really. So I think Matt Reeves is basically saying, well, what if he was just a human being and he hasn't really figured out where the volume needs to be set? And we're going to see him turn it up too high, maybe turn it too low. I think it's a great question, right? Because if this person actually existed in real life, it is probably the most realistic outcome, which is especially in the early days, he would probably go either too easy and yeah. then he would overreact and probably go too far. And maybe we see both of that in this film before we get to this sort of uneasy alliance of, yeah, he's sort of on the right side of justice, but his method of doing it is, you know, a little bit over the top yeah and maybe gordon's able to sympathize with that but the broader public is not yet and i yes. think that's that's a very valid uh a va- very valid exploration and i agree with you like i hope in a weird way i hope that he doesn't have his lines and code really established yet in this film i wouldn't mind him breaking breaking rules and doing things that are sort of seemingly un batman like with the idea that it teaches him he gets him closer to more refined kind of Batman yeah. that we get. So super duper excited. Let me ask you this. Does this inform us about what Matt Reeves was asking of Robin Pattinson and perhaps where the you know the news that we've gotten about the tension um that was supposedly there between Pattinson and Matt Reeves asking a bit too much from Pattinson or or having to do all these takes does that inform us as to why this perhaps may have been true but it is it's it's, it's work right and we got to get it right or we got to get to what it is that we need to get yeah i think so this is this actually when i read especially Pattinson's commentary on this it, it reinforced my opinion that the combination of the way he was being asked to portray Bruce Wayne, coupled with the way this production stalled out because of the pandemic, likely made for a very difficult working environment between Reeves and Pattinson that really wasn't anyone's fault. Yeah. Mm-hmm in the sense of Reeves was asking for this really deep, dark psychological exploration of this person who is conflicted, damaged, violent, but also heroic. And for Pattinson to go method and be that guy. Yeah, he's gonna, that's not a guy you want to run into on set if he's actually embodying that character, right? But at the same time, for him to get to the performance, you know, he was going to have to really unpack that and kind of explore that um, over and and having to do it over six, nine, you know, almost a year in terms instead of 90 days. 
I think that is in feeding a lot of what you're reading, at least that on the rumor mill that might have been true about this production. And may also explain why at the end of it, WB and Robert Pattinson were quite happy to sign a deal to work together. Yeah. Brian. I'm going to reiterate it again so, so people get it through their heads so that people, when it happens, people are like, yeah, he said it. <laughs> this movie is going to be, this comes out in 2022, right? Hopefully things are, 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 are sort of back to normal and we can all go and enjoy uh, seeing the movie all together. But this is going to be the best Batman we've ever seen on screen. And is gonna do. Who knows? This may get Oscar nomination. Who knows? Go ahead. The more I understand about this, so I come up with a little bit of a split. I think. Look, I mean, this will be fine box office wise. I am still lower than you. Mm -hmm. But not because I think the film will be any less than what you think it will be. I think the opposite. I think. I think this might be a movie that over time, like it'll be well received at the outset. And then I think over time will actually gain more acclaim mm -hmm. for the risks it's seemingly going to take mm -hmm. with regard to the character and its portrayal. But I think some of those risks might cost them a little bit of box office up front because it could be a little jarring, a little too dark. It may push away a little bit of the family audience that kind of was okay with some of the other iterations of Batman. I, I, I have a little bit of that sense of like the tension here is it's PG, if it's, it's PG 13, but it's right on the line and it's so intense that like well, you're going to leave you. the theater. And like, if you have a, if you have a younger, younger kid who you let see this, yeah. they're like, I don't, I don't know if they're going to see that again, but then yeah. like a couple, you know, six months, nine months, a couple years later, yeah. this gets held up as it did something that yeah. people did not appreciate. I would have to counter that by saying, you know, look at what the Joker did, man. And that yeah, was, that's true. I, I'm pretty sure was not kid friendly. And if the, you know, if you it's not rewatchable the, either. Yeah. yeah I, I've yeah. had you seen it. It's not rewatchable. Yeah. It's pretty, yeah, pretty well. So but, I, um, I hear you. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? So the kid may not be able to come back to see Bat the Batman, but the father will. He'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> He'll take his buddies. Um, yeah, I can't wait for this movie. Um, so let us know in the comment section below. Are you even more excited? Remember, there's a Batman prequel book that's supposed to be coming out. Um, I purchase it as, as soon as it comes out. Uh, we'll hopefully, Brian, uh, you get a chance to, to check it out. We can discuss it. Um, and, and, and be the, I guess, the the people to really t be the one of the guys to talk about this thing because who knows, okay. you know, who who's who else is going to be reading this? So, um, yeah, let us know in the conversation below, man. Ba the Batman is going to be that film. I'm so excited for it. Next up, Marvel plans a special. This special, and this is something that we've been hearing for the past week or so. Yeah. Um, Werewolf by Night. Brian, I want to ask you this. Is this one of those characters that you do these sort of one-off sort of things um, and not have to sort of commit to multiple, I, I would say, appearances or furthering the, along the storyline for a character like this? Because this is supposed to be for Halloween, right? Yeah. So... How serious do you think in terms of horror or, you know, in, for it being in the horror uh, genre, how, how, how close to it do you think it'll get? Is it going to, is it going to be like, you know, like horror, horror, or is it going to be like fun Halloween werewolf by night sort of thing? What, 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 what do you think they're going to do with this? The latter, I, I think. So the genesis of this, as I see it, is actually that ill-fated Star Wars Christmas special from 1978, which is like, you can find it on YouTube. I think you can find it on YouTube or at least some part of it. It's like one of the greatest television debacles of all time. They got 
Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford in there. They look completely like bewildered, disoriented. It's like supposed to be funny, but it's not. And then it's become funny in this sort of like laughable, pathetic sort of way after the fact. Yeah. But now it's like taken on like a life of its own because the filmmakers that grew up on it mm -hmm. all want to like make one of these. So there's actually going to be that I think actually like works. Well, I think like Favreau's doing a Star Wars universe like holiday special um, at some point. James mm -hmm. Gunn is doing one with Guardians of the Galaxy. There is a yes. Christmas special for for Guardians of the Galaxy. And then now we have this. I think they're all stemming from that, which means I think they're all going to be pretty lighthearted. They're all going to be pretty sort of, you know, family friendly. And, and and I don't think this is going to be like Marvel's venture into horror by 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 any means. But I, I will. Did you read up? So I did, wasn't familiar with Werewolf by Night, the story. This was not a comic I knew. So I went and read up yeah, on right, it after yeah. I heard mm -hmm. about this. There were two things. <laughs> so this story has been done like a lot of different ways. And like Werewolf winds up touching a lot of Avengers characters. So forget it. That's not happening in this. They're okay. not bringing Avengers into this. But... The origin story of Jack Russell, who is the guy who becomes Werewolf by Night, he obtains his powers from the Darkhold. And that mm. caught my attention. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Given the book exists now in the MCU. Yes. Even this, knowing Marvel, they would find a way. So in the, in the basic origin story, he finds the book, he copies the book, he uses the dark magic, he is inadvertently cursed by it and becomes werewolf by night. And then in trying to reverse the curse, he summons Thawne using the book and then has to be stopped. Interesting. Given that these are all rumored things that were supposed to tie into WandaVision and might be played out somewhere in the Doc Strange storyline, that yeah. at least was like, hmm, I wonder if they plant a seed with this, yeah, even amidst the, the comedy and the fun. Definitely. Um, I hope is scary. I hope is is done very well. I hope it's not a hokey, goofy sort of thing. Um, because I think if it, if they pull it off and make it scary and 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 do a good job, then we can get more of these sort of stories and and really look forward to them rather than it being just a thing that you know. People don't like, I don't know, but, this, you know, I just want these things to be done really well so that more content, man, that's what Marvel needs and not, not necessarily needs, but if they're going this route of doing all these other stuff, which is, by the way, I wanted to, to sort of get your thoughts on, and I think we spoke about it, the Marvel animation. Mm -hmm. That, you know, they, they really want to go into that world. Obviously they haven't done well with, um, what they've done in the past, uh, obviously when you compare it to to DCs, but I'm just and I don't know if we talked about it, but what do you think the animation will where would it be placed if, as far as the MCU, is this going to be some sort of Elseworld thing? Is it going to be their the own contained storyline that have nothing to do with um, the the movies and Disney Plus? And, and but it's still going to be in that world. What do you think is going to happen there? That's a great question. I mean, Marvel loves linkages. Kevin has said. I mean, even like now, I it's a, we can get into a whole. I don't want to get to the whole what if discussion, but yeah, yeah. He after promising the linkages i don't know that we've necessarily seen anything in this show that would be an obvious like jump off point for the future yeah. this show yeah. seems much more intent on playing the hits and then tweaking things at yes. the margin and just having a little bit of fun with it yeah so but it's also the only show where you're probably going to do that i would think other shows would be more sort of original storytelling um I thought this show would be more original storytelling than it's been quite honestly, but mm -hmm. I think future shows will kind of be more origins and, and new characters and places. Mm -hmm. But I think of like something like, you know, it, from what if like Jeffrey Wright as the watcher, mm -hmm. I mean, 
we really think Jeffrey Wright's only going to be an animated version of the Watcher in a what if cartoon? Yeah, no. Right. So like there, there's moments like that where I'm like, well, this has to lead to a live action version somewhere in the universe. With some of these castings and moves. So I think yeah. we are going to see some passing back and forth, but I don't know that Marvel has totally hammered that out yet because remember, they're only recently announced that they're staffing up the division. So that would imply they don't even have everyone physically in place yeah. working, developing, creating yet. So yeah. they have a good look though. What if looks good? So they might be, yeah. they might be onto something there. But. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about Werewolf by Night um, um, and whether or not this animation venture that they're going to go into, hopefully it does well and, and, and is something better than what we've gotten in the past. Although not all of it was horrible, but for the most part, they were. Uh, let's see what happens there. Let us know in the comment section below. Our last topic, the Shang-Chi reviews have flowed in 92 percent 92 percent on rotten tomatoes brian i can't wait i can't wait what i haven't read any other reviews um you have read some and you have your thoughts on on what you've read so far what are what and what are those yeah, so first off, you know, you if you get if you're getting north of 90 in the MCU, you are definitely into the rare air. Um, I think Endgame, I believe, still holds the record. It's like 97. Really? Um, Endgame? Yeah, I think wow. it's. I think in part they got a lot of points for just the dif the, the difficulty, right? It's like they, you know, they did something almost impossible, and the movie was good, and so people were yeah. like, "Wow, you get extra credit for that." Yeah. Um, I think. But, you know, the, the class of movie we're talking about is, you know, Captain America's uh, Winter Soldier and Civil War are both 90% plus. Iron Man 1, 90% plus. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Avengers 1 also was 90%. I think it's Avengers 1 and Avengers Endgame were the two that were above 90. Um, okay. Ultron and Infinity War were not. That's pretty much it. Everything else, even stuff that was really liked, you know, like Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, was Ragnarok might have been above 90 as well, but I'm, I think don't so. quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. Because I think there were a lot of things like Guardians that were like in the high, mid to high 80s. So this mm -hmm. is up there. So what I've tried to do is I, don't, I didn't try to read the full body of lots of reviews because that would mm -hmm. give away too much. But I came yeah. across a couple of themes. So theme number one is the direction of this movie is incredibly skilled. So Destin Daniel Cretton, who's done more sort of smaller type fare, people are really giving him props for mm -hmm. handling big action, handling sort of visuals in this movie and making the movie look good, which I mm -hmm. think given what we saw in some of the early trailers, you have to be encouraged by. Yeah. You have to be encouraged by. They're saying like, you're giving him praise for that. Uh, number two, Tony Leung as the Mandarin is getting universal accolades people like the performance like the character they're interested in the character it sounds like he has really delivered something that we want to see that's very interesting and what's and what's crazy about it i mean we you've been talking about him for some time even before we got trailers or anything about his performance or being um looking forward to seeing his performance and he had he, it seems like he has not disappointed no so he's getting top building, I would say, among the cast. Mm -hmm. I think Simu Liu seems to be scoring kind of like good reviews. People are like, he's, you know, it's kind of what we knew. He's a magnetic, charismatic guy. I think people feel like the part is at points a little uneven. I've seen some people in the taglines that have kind of been like, he could have been written better. Like, mm -hmm. he, that's kind of been like, but not bad, but like could have been written better. So, mm -hmm. but he's getting points for sort of at least bringing the character to life. And then I think the biggest critique of the movie seems to be the good old Marvel third act problem. It does seem like there is a, f a whiff of people saying the first half and the or the first two thirds of this are really original and different. And then it feels like the Marvel formula is still kind of closing in on them a little bit in the third yeah. act. Again, I have never felt like, I mean, a lot of Marvel movies to me end just fine. 
Like yeah. I, I didn't walk out of Winter Soldier and be like, boy, the ending really stunk. Yeah. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, but it does seem like critics love to get on Marvel about the way they close these movies out. And you do yeah. see it in a number of the reviews that people were felt like the movie peaked at around sort of the midway or sort of two thirds of the way through and then kind of yeah. came back down to earth a, a little bit. So, but I mean, by and large, by and large, though, I mean, the, the, the reception has been very strong and people are saying that it feels distinct, that it does feel like this is of, of its own piece, that this is not like a rehash of Iron Man one or a rehash of Captain America one or Thor original Thor. Like people are giving it praise for like doing some different things, which, as I told you in the trailer, you haven't seen that I told you not to see. I mm -hmm. think that's where you get evidence of that that we really didn't get as much in in the other uh, in the other previews. Yeah, I mean, it's just I've never seen or I've never or remember seeing how or or hearing people talking about a film that hasn't come out about how good this movie is, right? On a consistent week to week basis since the um just their um what's it called their first showing their 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 like red the premiere, carpet event red yeah, carpet the premiere. yeah yeah, yeah. ever since then is how good this movie is how good this movie is even people who are not in the the in the not into the comic book genre are talking about how great this movie is it's like I got to see what this is all about now, right? And I'm trying to sort of chill and not get too overly excited about it because I don't want to feel like, I don't want to hype it up too much in, in my brain. You know what I'm saying? Because it, then going in there, you see the third act and it was whack. I don't want that to, to sort of drive my uh, feeling towards the film when I do actually go see it on September 4th. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, but it, it does feel like so. If I take that's the critic side. If I take like the vid, the kind of the the blogosphere, vlogosphere side, you know, kind of the podcast YouTube world, it does feel like the consensus on this for people who have seen it is it doesn't threaten. Like if you have a defined top three, which I think a lot of people probably have, you know, whether it's mm -hmm. like winners, some people have like we would have Winter Soldier one. A lot of people probably have Ragnarok run. I think a lot of people would choose like Infinity War. Maybe some people choose Endgame, but you have it an Avengers movie up there. And then maybe it's like Iron Man 1, something like that. Like for a lot of people, that's like the, the pantheon. I think the consensus is this doesn't crack that, but it's solidly in like the next tier, like which would sort of be like the Civil War, Black Panther. Like it's in that category, which... Mm -hmm. That's a massive win. If that's yeah. true, that's a massive yeah. win for this out yeah. of the gate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, Shang Chi. Like, who who would have thought, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, a lot of good things to look forward to, man. Um, the more the Batman news comes out, the more hype I get about doing these shows because I always want to talk about it. Um, any little tidbit that I may get get from it, I want to you know sort of go over it and see what other people are thinking and, and, and just um, listening to Pattinson and Matt Reeves talk about um, they're serious about who this Batman is and what he's going through. And we're going to see a very, again, a very, as to quote them, a very emotional Batman. And I, I just can't wait. Um, I'm impressed that they I'm impressed huh? by the way that they they managed that no one leaked it. I'm impressed that they were able to keep the cinema con footage of both the Batman and Matrix 4 offline and they're not yeah. going to release it. Yeah. So you probably got to wait till Fandom to get sort of the the next real trailer. Yeah. Um before we sign off, what are your thoughts on um what you heard about uh, the Matrix? Um, I mean, my expectations are low to be quite honest. Yeah. That's not a trilogy that we left in a great place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and when they said they were doing this, I was like, kind of like, why? Mm -hmm. Um, I read the description of the sort of the, the teaser mm -hmm. 
I did not read anything that suggested it was like groundbreaking again in the way that the first one was. It felt more like a return to the world. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I keep my, I don't know what your expectations are, but mine are, mine are low. I'm, I want to see it. I want to see it in the theater, yeah, yeah. but I am not expecting, I, I guess I'm sort of expecting something that's between reloaded and revolutions in terms of quality. Yeah. To me, if the, the part two and part three never existed, I'd be fine. The matrix, the first movie was a classic to me and she had just been, that should, it should have been it. Um, and this, from what I've heard, the, 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 what they showed was, was dope and people really liked it, but you know, I'm not looking forward or I'm not excited. I should say to see this film. I'm curious to see what they do. Let's see what we see in for the trailer, but I'm not booking my tickets to see this film. Like I've done with so many other films as soon as it's, it has become available. The Matrix would be one of those things that I might miss in the theaters, unfortunately, but let's see. Now that's our show for today. Please hit that like and subscribe button. That's uh, uh, hit that notification bell. Uh, subscribe to the the channel. We really do appreciate it. Uh, you can also listen to us on iTunes. If you're driving, you can watch um, um, the the show on YouTube. You know, it's funny. I, I, when I'm editing the shows, I hear when I'm watching. I'm like, damn, what 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 did I just say there? And I and I put. I don't know the thought bubbles of what it is supposed to actually be <laughs> because I keep feeling like, you know, so if you're watching the, if you're listening to the show, and not watching it. I, I'm correcting myself. I'm correcting myself. <laughs> uh, anyway, Brian, any last words before we sign off? No, I think next time we do this, we will have seen Shang-Chi Shang potentially. So that'll be pretty exciting. Yeah, man. And we, we at some point, we got to discuss the what if um all i can say is that it has gotten progressively better true is what i, I is what is what i can say about the show but we'll talk about the show some other time um and uh, we'll see you next time on the nerd gen report <laughs>